This lesson is on the U.S. customary system. Now, the U.S. customary system has words like feet, gallons, inches, stuff like that, miles. But everywhere else in the world uses the metric system. Okay? Now, I don't know why. And the metric system is things like meters, liters, grams, kilograms, kilometers, things like that. But we don't go by that. We go by the U.S. customary system. So let's write down a few um, units of weight that are in the customary system. Write this down on your paper. 16 ounces equals 1 pound. So one of my sons was born, and he was 9 pounds, 15 ounces. How much more did he need to be to equal 1 more pound? So nine pounds to equal ten. One ounce. He just needed one more ounce, which is like a paper clip. Okay? <laughs> he needed one more paper clip to weigh ten pounds. Alright? Now my other son weighed nine pounds nine ounces. So how much more ounces did he need to equal ten pounds? Seven? Nine and seven make 16 ounces, which would be one pound. So that would be like seven paper clips more than he would need. Okay? Now, here's another one that's fun. 2,000 pounds, LBS, 2,000 pounds equals one ton. This is like an elephant. An elephant weighs one ton, which is 2,000 pounds. Write that down. Okay? That's something you need to know to answer some of the questions. It would probably be a good idea to try to memorize these. The one pound equals 16 ounces, and the 2,000 pounds equals one ton. Now, so answer this question for me, knowing what I just shared with you. A half of a ton truck can carry a load of half of a ton. What is the load capacity in pounds of a half ton pickup truck? How much is a half ton in pounds? Uh, a thousand pounds. A thousand, very good. See how you did that? A thousand mm -hmm. pounds. A half ton is a thousand pounds. One ton is two thousand pounds. Very good. All right, ready to write these down? These are other ones that you need to memorize. Write this down. Twelve inches is the same thing as one foot. Just this one's in inches, this one's in feet. Okay? Here's another one to know. Three feet is the same thing as one yard. Now, I'm not talking about a yard outside. Okay, it's a yard stick. Okay? Three feet equals one yard stick. Okay? Now, what about this one? 1760 yards equals one mile. Okay? 1760 yards equals one mile. And last one, 5,280 feet whoops, equals one mile. So this, this one, one mile equals that many in yards. This one mile equals this many in feet. Um, I would say, just from doing math all these years, this one you'll see way more than this one. So this one I would definitely memorize, 5,280 feet equals one mile. That really is taking a ruler and placing one after another after another after another 5,280 times to equal one mile. That's a lot of rulers or a lot of feet. <laughs> okay, now let's do this. Think about the mountain bike you have outside. How many feet long do you think that is? Uh, think about feet or rulers. When five. Going across five. Five or six. Some, some are longer and bigger and some are not. So five or six feet is about right. Very good. All right. Now, let's talk about something that is very important. I want you to draw a big G on your paper. This I like to call, call the gallon house. This will help you in your ACTs, SATs, whatever, to know what I'm about to draw. Okay, so this is a gallon, and if I draw a dotted line, okay, that is a 
half gallon. Now stay with me. Let's say I put in this house some windows. And those windows are actually going to be quartz. Okay? Q for quartz. Now, if I asked you the question, how many quartz are in a gallon? Four. Four. Very good. How many quartz are in a half gallon? Two. Two. Very good. Now, so far we've got some windows in our house, but now let's draw some people. P. Two P's on each one. These are two people looking through the window each time. And guess what those P's stand for? Pint. So, how many pints are in a quart? Uh, two. Two. How many pints are in two quarts? Um, four. Very good. How many pints are in a gallon? Eight. Very good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You see how you do that? Pretty easy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Just by looking at this. Now, inside each of the people that are looking out the window, you're going to put a C, which are their eyes. Two C's. Two I's, two C's. Just like we have two eyes. We're pretending like those are the eyes of the people in each one. Now, now that you know that, answer this question. Ready? How many cups are in one pint? Two. Two. How many cups are in one quart? Four. Very good. How many cups are in a gallon? Sixteen. Very good. How many cups are in a half gallon? One, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Very good. See how you do that? Mm -hmm. So you're going to get questions like that all the time. If you just draw this on your paper real quick, You'll answer every question they have, and it's just that simple. Okay? Uh -huh. So, that's good for you to know. And that's that portion on, that, on the teaching on that. Okay? Now, listen to this. Steve always drinks eight cups. The C stands for cups. I don't remember if I mentioned that or not. C. The C stands for yeah, cups. Okay. So, if Steve always drinks eight cups of water, how many quarts is that? Well... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's eight cups, which is how many quarts? Two. Two. Very good. So the answer would be eight cups is two quarts. Very good. Now, let's move to something really quick, and this is the last thing we're going to do. I'm going to draw a thermometer up here. All right? Now, this is a Fahrenheit scale, by the way. Did you know that other places in the world go by Celsius? Uh huh. The American system uses Fahrenheit, just like we use a different measuring system. We also do a different t temperature system. Okay, so look here. This is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, this is zero degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, have you ever heard or even seen yogurt places that name themselves 32 degrees? Mm -hmm. Okay, do you know why they name it 32 degrees? That's when the ice cream freezes. If it was 33 degrees, it would be melting. Uh -huh. If it's 32 degrees, it forms a full yogurt or ice cream or whatever. So 32 degrees is the freezing point, just so you know. So if you're outside and your mom says, it's freezing outside, it must be below 32. <laughs> Unless you have a mom that's cold all the time, and she may think 44 degrees is freezing, but it's really not actually freezing unless it's 32 degrees. Okay, now let's do this one. A lot of times room temperature can be about 68, 70. I like to keep my house about 70 degrees. It's about room temperature. Okay, now your normal body temperature is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, 98.6 means, it doesn't mean that yours is exactly that, but after they took healthy temperatures of tons of Americans, they learned that this is about the average of a person, of a healthy person, for their temperature to be in their body. All right? And guess what? I wish I could go all the way up here and mark a line, but I'm going to go as far as I can. 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Guess what that is? 
It's the opposite of freezing. It is boiling water. So 211 degrees, the water will not have bubbles boiling yet. But 212 degrees, it will. So what is the difference between what, how many degrees is between freezing and boiling? Freezing, boiling. How much degrees is in between that? Well, let's do the math. Okay? 180. So there are 180 degrees from um, boiling to freezing. 180 degrees. Got it? That is lesson 16.